so me and a bunch of other game developers decided to try and remake all the minigames in the original Mario Party. At the start, everyone picked their minigame they wanted to remake, and since I was one of the first to join, I got to pick from any of the minigames to remake. But before I did that, I wanted to try some of the minigames to help me decide. We do have a Nintendo 64 and the cartridge for Mario Party, but I don't think it's in the best condition right now and I'm too lazy to try and clean it. So I set up RetroArch with a ROM I totally got from my real N64 cartridge and it was time to start playing some minigames. You know, this minigame is really interesting because somehow they were able to make one that's boring to watch and to play. Alright, what's next? Hey, this looks familiar. There were a few minigames in the first Mario Party that got you to spin the joystick in circles really fast and since it's hard to keep your thumb on the joystick, people would place the palms of their hands on the joystick and spin it like that. What they didn't know before doing that was it gave them terrible blisters on their hands. Now you could just blame this on the customer, they are the ones who played the game weirdly. But that's a bit harder to do when the people in the ads played just like this. It's the way the game was meant to be played. Luckily Nintendo was nice enough to give everyone who was physically or emotionally scarred by their game a free pair of gloves. How generous. Moving on, I decided I wanted to remake this minigame called Limbo Dance. In it, pushing A makes the player jump forwards and lean back a bit to fit under the limbo bars. And that luckily doesn't cause blisters, which is always a plus. If you lean back too far or hit a bar, you fall over and die or something like that. The first thing I did was make a temporary player model, so introducing Todd. I made it so pressing the spacebar makes Todd move forwards and squish down a bit, but in case you couldn't tell, in the original game they don't squish down. So I had to get to work on making it use animations, which only took me a few... hours. Next I made an orange limbo bar that kills you if you touch it. But since the orange bar looks really ugly, I decided to model a new one in Blender. Next, I made the final player model. Here he is, Bean Man. Next we got to work on properly animating him, which means I need to give him some bones. Since both the legs will bend together, I only needed to put one bone there between them rather than one for each leg. This was my first time rigging a model, so while some of it is kind of off, it still looks pretty good. I set up an animation for when he jumps back, and since his legs look kinda weird, I just sort of... And just like that, I have an acceptable looking animation for the player. This was the easy part. From what I understand, when you import an animated model into Godot, you need to have three parts. The mesh, which is the thing you see, the bones or armature, which is what does the positioning of parts of the mesh, and the skin that does something. Whatever the skin does, it prevents this from happening. And the mesh I imported didn't have any skin. After exporting the model six times, I finally found one with skin. I hooked it up, and it's backwards. Uh, one sec. There we go. After I had that fixed, I rotated the camera a bit and made the player trigger people's epilepsy. Next I made a few sound effects with good old just a fixer. Then I added another trap to give it a bit more variety that waits 3 seconds, then falls down to try and slice the player. After that, I reversed it so everything changes color except for the player. I wanted to give my game a more distinct art style, so I gave everything borders and added this weird looking white sky. Then I grounded the game with some ground and added some jump particles. After running a poll in the super secret remaking Mario Party Discord server and getting one response, I decided to make the player glow. 
because it would get really boring if you could just stop, wait an hour, and come back to the game, I added this red wall that follows you from behind. Touching it kills you and plays this death animation I made. And I also added a pause menu for if you do want to stop, wait an hour, and come back anyway. I completely broke the player for about 20 minutes, but once I had that fixed, I started work on the title screen. Let me tell you something, regular mouse cursors? Boring, dumb, and ugly. So I decided to fix that by making my own. I made this, which looks pretty cool. It squishes when you move it around, bounces when you click, and grows when you right click. Kinda looks like an eye. Then I finished up the title screen with some buttons, my logo that rotates when you click it, and my usual camera thing where it rotates away from the mouse. Then I set up the finish line so your hard work avoiding obstacles can actually amount to something. Since I needed some music, I tried to make my own in FL Studio. First I made a really cursed rendition of Temi Village from Undertale. Uh, give me a sec while I go and dispose of this. After I made that monstrosity, I decided I shouldn't make music for this and got some from Abstraction. Thanks to the Devlogs Club for organizing this, it was pretty fun to make my game. I'm gonna be streaming on Twitch making a game with ideas for my Twitch chat as a celebration for 100 subscribers after this premiere, so if you want to come make a game with me, follow Possibly Axolotl on Twitch. I also said I would be doing the sponge when I get to 100 subscribers. Uh, this might be harder than I thought. Oh, I know. Well, when you take your leg and you stick it in the air, and then you take the other one and jam it right up there, you twist yourself around and give a great big lunge. Now you're doing the sponge. I do the sponge, sponge, I do the sponge. Back to your Thanks for watching, subscribe if you want, follow me on Twitch to make a game with me. Uh, bye.